Hello, my name is Tom Abbott. I'm an applications engineer with the Line Production Systems. I'm going to talk about our modular air skid system today. The air skid system is a steel air skid combined in groups of four, six, or more. The air skids are typically this configuration. There's a steel framework, a slide out tray that has, <coughs> excuse me, has mounted the air bearing which actually provides the air film movement across the floor. The system as we have it here includes four air skids, a controller, and four hose assemblies that connect the controller to the air skid. The controller has an on-off ball valve to shut off the air supply. It has a gauge to read the air pressure. And it has flow controls that go to each air skid. Those are important to be able to balance the load, which we'll talk about in a minute. A typical air skid system, when you go to place it under your load, is best to try to keep the center of gravity of the load located between equally spaced air, air skids. In other words, if your load is off center and you're not able to center the skids under the load, you can adjust for off center loading with the flow controls. But you need to be careful that you don't exceed the capacity of any individual air skid with an off center load. You'll see that we have them placed under this frame under two structural members that provide support for the air skid. This is important because it keeps the air skid parallel to the operating surface or the floor. If it were centered under only one structural member, it would tend to tip whenever you inflate the air bearings. And that's something we want to guard against. It is possible to locate under one structural member if you meet the minimum contact requirements as shown in each air skid specification sheet. But it would need to be centered directly on the air skid. The system components connect together with quick, com quick disconnect fittings that plug onto the controller and onto the air skid. The fittings that we use are a flow-through fitting that do not have any shutoff so that we don't have uh, pressure drops through our plumbing connections. And it's important if you supply air through a quick disconnect fitting that you use the same type fitting that, that doesn't uh, have any flow restrictions. We're going to do a practical demonstration of uh, an air flotation system using the arrangement that we discussed earlier. It's always best whenever you move with the air bearings to have a spotter, at least one spotter, to ensure for a safety standpoint that uh, you're clear of any obstructions or personnel. So Michael's going to be our safety spotter for this move. It's important whenever you make the move to communicate with everyone involved to let them know that you're going to do every step of the operation as far as turning the air on, moving, and shutting the air back off. When you first energize your system, it's best to open the flow controls an equal number of turns. Then turn the air on. Once you're floating, then you can adjust each individual flow control to maintain the same floating height on the air skid. You may have to walk around and look at each skid to be able to determine the correct height. At that point, you can use the main on-off ball valve to control the system. 
So at this point, we're going to just move a few feet to show you a demonstration of, of typically how it will operate. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. I'm turning the air on. Okay, I'm shutting the air off. That concludes this video. For more information on the air skid system, please consult your operator's manual or airfloat.com for more information.